Ah, uh, now we're being recorded. Okay, so I've got a few Power Query things to share. Um, I've got a lot more in other files. People have questions. So uh, let's start with how, how many people are familiar with their joins and comfortable with joins? Or how many people are not? Can you say in the comment section, if you know your joins, if you're not comfortable with joins, what's the deal here with everybody? Ah, yeah, Raheem knows joins, yes. And then Cristiano has to stay quiet because people are asleep. All right. Okay, so. Power Query has six joins in the in the menu, all right? And two of them are anti-joins. And here is a diagram that I'm gonna show. Oh shit, hold on a second. All right turn the phone off okay Let's share my screen okay so can you see my screen now okay let me get this thing over out of the way okay so what I need to do here is I have my friends list of artists and songs. And then here's my list of musicians and songs. And I wanna know what is on her list that is not on my list. And this is gonna need an, an anti-join because I wanna know what's over here that's not over there. And here's a diagram. So we've got Prince Little Red Corvette and Migo Slippery is on both of our lists. I don't want that. My list has the Red Hot Chili Peppers roller coaster and Calvin Harris's slide. I'm not interested in that. I want to know what's on her list that's not on my list. So I hear a lot of beeping. Okay. So let's see, go to data queries and connections. All right, so I've got my list. Okay, and then I've got my friends list. So I need to think about my left and my right. So I wanna have my list be the left side and her list be the right side. And I'm gonna do a right anti-join. So let's do that. Data, get data from file, from folder. No, I don't want folder. No, I want to get data, combine queries, merge. I want my list and then my friends list. And because We've got songs that can have the same title or uh, musicians that can be in multiple lists. We have to do both columns. We've got to match both columns. We can't match just one column. So here we've got musician and artist. And then I'm going to hold down the control key, songs, songs. So now we see that we're going to match the pair of the columns. And then I want the right anti-join. Okay. Now this is interesting because we got our left and our right sides. And here is our left side that has nothing in it, right? Because I don't want to know what I already have that she doesn't have. So I can actually right click. So let me show. Okay, so down here shows 
what's on her list that's not on mine. So I can right click, remove other columns because I don't need that, expand this, okay. So now these are the songs that are on her list that are not on my list. And I'm gonna close and load that. All right, so let's verify Aisha. Right, Aisha is on her list and is not on my list. So let's see, I am trying to get back to the uh, trying to see if, if if there's any chat, any questions. Yes, Sue Georgie. You don't and Bimal says um the audio is not so clear. Okay, so I see now a lot of people uh are familiar with their joins. Okay, so was anybody not so familiar or is everybody on top of this game here? All right, all right, so I showed you all something you already know. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna close this. I'm not gonna save it. Okay. So I keep hearing a lot of beeping. Okay, so here is something that I show as a warning about filtering in Power Query. All right, so here I've got my content. So here, my data. Oh, here's something new, right click get data from table slash range, brand new. We don't have to go into the data tab. Okay, so here is the warning. If I wanna deal only with captains, okay, I'm gonna filter. So I want this captain, captain, captain. Okay, those three captains, okay. So now you've got to watch this. It has hard coded these specific captains. So when I add these people, Afonso Meaning, right? Afonso Meaning and CJ Nunn will not be part of this filter when I add that data because it is hard coding this. All right, so I'm not going to do it that way. That would be good if I was doing this data one time and that was it. But if I want to repeat, I need to do it this way. Text filters begins with, begins with C-A-P-T. Okay, now we've got that filter. Okay, I'm going to close and load. And then I'm going to add this new group. Go over here and refresh. So now we do have the two new captains. And we would not have had them if we had done the, the filter that other way. All right. You got that? Has anybody had problems with that before, with that kind of filtering? Let me know. Faraz says yes. No. Uh, oh, Faraz burned his hand once. Yes. <laughs> uh, a reference to another video I did about these are the kind of things you got to watch out for. Um, because if you don't know, you can burn your hand. You can uh, get some wrong stuff going on tell people the wrong thing, do the wrong analysis, if you aren't aware of these two ways of filtering. All right. And I'm gonna close this, don't save it. All right. Now,
Okay. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Thanks, Altaf. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Hello. Yes. Hi, I am Abbasuddin. Mm hmm Dakagaliko from Bangladesh. Ah, Bangladesh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. I want to know about Excel totally, completely, how I can make it. How you can learn about Excel totally and completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I have three short videos where I get into that. And the first thing is nobody knows Excel completely. And there isn't a reason to because you've got heavy statistical functions, you've got engineering functions, there's uh, text functions, all of these different things. There are uh, you know, trigonometry functions. Not a person in the world, I don't think, would need to know all of that. Um, then also, it takes a long time of getting and see a lot of different stuff. So it is not fast. And you have to have a reason to want to know all of that because it, it's got to stick, right? So, you know, you also have to learn what's there, what's, you yeah. know, have some sense of where things are in Excel. And I feel like, you know, that took me a while to understand myself or why people would hire me to do Excel stuff. And it wasn't because I knew everything. It was because maybe it would take me two days to figure out something that they would never figure out. That's really the key here is to see a lot of stuff over a long period of time and use the community. There are forums where people have answered questions or helped each other out. So that's mainly my answer to that is you're not going to know everything completely. Um, but what you can do is give yourself permission to take time and go slow. Because, I, and I'll tell you, the first few years I used Excel, all I knew was filter, sort, um, and hand coloring cells but a lot of my analysis was better than the reports that the company was generating because I was able to think. And that's a big thing is to, you know, seeing a lot of stuff so that you can start to recognize patterns and think about strategies and think five steps ahead because I've got all this data and it's all in all these different places. Now I got to bring them all together, but then there's going to be a certain kind of duplicates that I'm going to have to watch out for. So maybe there is an intermediate step to where when I bring all this stuff together, I can still see what came from where so that um, I can get a sense of say, maybe the data source over here uh, has more up to date email addresses and stuff. And over here, this stuff is old. So when I bring them together and take the duplicates out, I need to take the duplicates out from this one, but not that one. So there's all of that kind of stuff that you got to see and have to experience over a long period of time to where it starts to get ingrained in you and you start getting a habit. And then here, let me, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here so I can talk. Right. So, and then there's like the people who use Excel a lot, um, the MVPs and people we hope will be MVPs like, like Faraz and Cristiano. We have different specialties. I've built a career cleansing data. And then um, you got people who connect Excel to databases. I've never had to do that. 
You got people who learn a lot about power pivot. I've never really had a need for power pivot, but I know that stuff is there. That's what's really important, knowing that it's there and being able to contact somebody like, like my friend Wynn Hopkins in Australia. I think I've got a power pivot problem. Can he look at it? Then he says, no, really, you got more of a Power Query problem, so stick with Power Query. Okay. So, yeah, we've got our different specialties. Um, you got some people who are heavy in the finance and accounting world, and they know about that kind of stuff and how to use those accounting formulas. I've dealt with a lot of photographers, uh, restaurants, financial planners, lots of small businesses that had a lot of messy data or they needed a tool built. So, uh, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, that's my response to this question about knowing all about Excel. It's it's a long answer to that to say, yeah, you're not going to master it and give yourself time, but constantly work at it. All right. All right. Yes. Everyone has his own power. Yes. Yes. All right. So let me share my screen again. Okay, here is an issue that is not so easy to deal with in Power Query. It, with XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP, we could do this. We could say, okay, what should be the discount associated with this eight? Well, it should be zero. What about this 59? It should be 5%. Okay, with XLOOKUP um, or VLOOKUP, are you index match people? We could do this. But if we had to do this in Power Query, it gets messy. Um, what you could do is if you just have a few of these categories, you can add conditional columns. But after three, four, five, that gets tedious. If you have to put things into 15 categories, no, no. So here is one thing. All right. I'm going to go to right click, get data from table slash range. Okay. So I am going to cheat. I'm going to highlight here, then add column, column from example, from selection. So now I'm going to put in some examples. So this eight should get zero. The 59 should get 0 0.05. This 810, 0 0.25. Okay. The 100 should get 0 0.105. Okay. And Power Query is making this formula up here for us. Okay, this two should get a zero. And what's another one? This 50 should get a 0 0.105. Okay. All right, so it is not completely right. Now, why is this? I'm gonna make this a number. Okay, all right. So now I gotta straighten this up. Go back here, greater than or equal to 810, no, it should be 150. Okay, greater than or equal to, so the 105, that should actually be 75. And then, This should be 35. And then 
we've got this again, but really we don't have any other categories except for the zero. So then else. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this stuff here because any remaining should be zero. Okay, now everything is showing what it should show. So the uh, 31 is getting a zero. Okay, the 700 has a 25%. All right, so this is good. Close and load two. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay. All right, and then add this new data. and refresh everything has the right discount associated with it all right uh so faraz is saying what great easiest way to write a nested if yeah this is the easiest way to write a nested if by having column from example kind of guide it, right? And then it was easier for me to clean up, but I had to give an example of every category and then notice that extra piece that had to be cut off. All right. Anything else? All right. I'm going to close this, not save it. Okay. I am going to walk you through something that I was dealing with here recently. This is a mess. I am not gonna do it in real time, but I'm gonna take you through my steps. You ready for this? Okay. It's always- Oz, uh, is, uh, Oz, yeah. we have a question in the chat yeah. box. Right. Uh, is it always possible to use Power Query instead of VLOOKUP? I am going to say yes. If now anybody can correct me, but what I will say is there are times where it's better to use Power Query than VLOOKUP. Now, let me show you an example of that if you would like to see it. If you don't want to see it, I won't show it. You want to, anybody want to see that? Oh. Raj says yes. Okay. Um, name. Uh, and then let's see. Name. And then there. Car license plate. Okay. Okay, so we've got this. Okay, uh, let's see. Copy. All right, so now we're going to say uh, Gene has a car license plate that is A1. Al has a car license plate of. Okay, but now uh, we've got some other people. And then uh, Ahmed actually has another car. And 
and Poppy has three cars. All right, now, if you look up XLOOKUP index match, it would bring me back Poppy's first car. Or if I used XLOOKUP to look from the bottom up, it would bring me this Poppy's car, okay? VLOOKUP will match all of these. All right, so I'm gonna, let's do that. Okay, from table slash range, okay. Let's call this residence, close and load two. And I'm gonna make this a connection only, okay. And then I want this, your table, all right. Table does have headers, okay. Vehicles. Now here is something that I like to do. I am not gonna load this. I'm gonna stay in here and go to combine, merge queries, merge queries as new, okay? Because I want a third query. So that's why I'm doing it as new, as opposed to just doing a merge and having it merge, having the first one merge onto the second one. No, I want a separate merged query in the end. So I wanna put, Residence and then vehicles name name and do a left outer join. Okay. Now expand here. Okay. Now we've got Poppy's three cars. Let's do a sort. Uh, God dang, why can't I find this sort? Oh, okay, cool, all right, there we go. So we got Ahmed's two cars, Poppy's three cars, and a VLOOKUP, an X, X match will not do that for us. All right, so that's when you should use Power Query instead of staying in native Excel. All right, got that? Yes, that's why it's, it's really good to have Power Query for situations like this. You got to tell all your friends, do you know about Power Query? If you don't, stop. Get out of the bathtub right now. Go and get Power Query. Get out of the line at the bank right now. Go home, start up Power Query. Put that sandwich down. Go home, get Power Query. You got to do that. All right, this is not funny anymore. All right, because imagine you had to do something serious and and used X lookup and got a half-assed answer. No, no, no. All right. I'm gonna close this. All right, and then you saw that, uh, yeah, hats, yes. Hats help, they help a lot. All right, Bimal Kumar Paul. All right, glad you like that. So here is something that, I, and please, if there's any more questions, always ask, always ask. We can do anything we want here. It's the middle of the night. Okay, um, I've got this data where this person's book, Denise Hanover, wrote this book called The Scorpion, and here is royalty information, and then here is the US market, the UK market. We've got the sales data in these three different columns. We got this down here, and then we got um, merged sales. There's all kind of madness going on. All right, so, this needed to be converted to something useful. So let me take you through how I went about this. Data, queries and connections. 
All right. So first of all, when I did the, uh, uh, you know, from table slash range, this is what it wound up looking like afterward, after Power Query put it into a table. It broke all to hell. All right. So here, let's go over here to see how I had to deal with this. Okay. So here's the data. Then what I started to do was filter out rows, okay? Because there is a lot of stuff that I don't need and it helps to start by getting all that shit out of the way that I don't need. Like um, like uh, totals, I don't need totals. Once this data is flattened and useful, I can get my own totals, but right now it's just stuff that's in the way. So um, we filtered out rows, let's see. Filtered out anything with title, UK, whatever. Okay, so that was done. Then removed columns. Okay, that was 15, 16, 17. Right, these are totals down here. Don't need them. We can get totals later. All right, so I removed columns. Then I transposed the table because watch by transposing the table now i can fill up and fill down i can start filling stuff in okay and then i renamed columns then did some filtering okay what did i filter here okay i filtered out this because this is for denise hanover she knows her own name. We don't need that role, it's just in the way. That's why it got filtered out. Okay, fill down to get these in place, right? Associated with what they need. Okay, then rename columns. So then the next thing is to reference a query. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I have now the UK market, the US market, remove it because now I wanna work with the US data and do the same thing to the UK data and append them later, but it would have been really difficult to work with them both together. All right, and we can see this, let's go to view, query dependencies. All right, so here is the sort the workbook, the source query and then references to the UK and the US that then we get to a final. So everything is all hanging together. Okay, so um, I added a conditional column here. So I removed the UK, add a conditional column. Okay, so that I could get US on the outside here, then fill it up and fill it down right in anticipation of um later on wanting to be able to use a slicer or filter by, filter by the market okay so i need a column that says us all up and down then add another conditional column so that i can bring the title out and fill that down okay another conditional column to bring the royalty out to the side. Then there's a change type and then filter rows to get rid of that null, right? Because that is not helping me any in any way. So just getting stuff out of the way, all right? And then with the UK data, it's just the same thing. And then finally, just do an append Got the primary table US, UK, you know, the append, and then pivot the column. All right, so what uh, to pivot this, what we want on top is this column three on top. So this would get highlighted, right? And then 
we would pivot it. And so now the data is such that if we want to look at ALCs, we can look at the ALC by itself, right? So that this this took a bit to think about, right? But I want to share the thought process because that's really the hardest stuff is thinking about how the hell am I going to get something useful? And one thing is start by clearing junk out of the way. Stuff that's in the way that you don't need that forces you to scroll all over the place, get it out of the way and realize things like I can get grand totals once this data is useful. That can go. If this is a data that's got my name on it, I know my name. Get that field out of there. Get down to what I need to work with. And the transpose helped a lot because there uh, were some, some uh, fields where the data needed to go left, right. No, but you can't do that so easily in Power Query. Transpose it and then fill up, fill down. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. All right, um, so there's a lot there. Was that helpful? Was that helpful? The strategy is is a, is the biggest thing. Um, thanks, Altaf. Thank you. Thanks, Cristiano Faraz. Thank you, everybody. Ahmed. Um, strategy is a big thing. Being able to think ahead, think several steps ahead, clear stuff out of the way as you're going, break things apart and put it back together. Don't be afraid and don't be afraid. Um, like if somebody comes back to you and says, you know, there was an easier way you could do that. Okay, learn from that, but also don't be embarrassed because a lot of times the people we're doing this work for, they don't care how we got to our answer. They don't care if we use VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, index match, Power Query. They just want things to be right. And that's what we focus on. So if you have to do things a simple, slow, long way, but you can follow it and understand what you did, do that, but still learn. All right. Iraj, you are welcome. Seth. We have a question, Oz. Yes. What is the question? Uh, it's about your favorite one, Fuzzy Lookup. <laughs> oh, okay. Fuzzy okay, Lookup. So, huh? Yes. Uh, how much uh, Fuzzy Lookup in Excel or Power BI uh, is handy when it comes to the large data? And uh, when it comes to a large data where someone has a client, oh, it's Rahim, uh, where he has a client around like 200,000 rows. Mm -hmm. and how that can help him in the pattern once he defined in the transform table but later on he gets some new patterns and every time you know he has to manage it manually okay so so there's two things in the fuzzy logic section there's the transformation table and then there's the percentages so are you asking about the transformation table specifically yeah, transformation, yeah the transformation table Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, I have found that one very handy, the transformation, the, the reference table. Here, let me see. I'm gonna... Okay. So for people who don't know, but, but help me understand the question better, because I can show this example. Sure. So you got 200,000 records. And how can this help? Um, again, I'm thinking strategy. And, you know, one thing, um, trying to get a sense of how big your problem is. Say if you've got 2,000 records and then you look at this one column, do you have 2,000 unique entries here? Do you have 100? Do you have nine? Um, and then that's where I would use a unique, 
the filter function to get a sense of, okay, how many unique records do I have here? And then look for that uh, to see, is there any things that are just crazy or just different ways of saying the same thing, like New York City or NY, both legitimate, or do you have New York misspelled? You got to fish all that stuff out. Um, it, just to get a sense of, of what you're dealing with. Okay, and I can show this example here. Uh, let's see which queries I have already. So, okay, so I have these names and then these cities. And I need to get the agent and the email matched up with all of these people. And I have this, what I call a conversion table right here, which is actually my transformation table. So let's do this. Uh, Oz, I think uh, yeah. audience can't see your screen. Could you please oh, share it? Oh, oh, they're still looking at me. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So. Okay. All right. Um, so here we've got the name and the city, but then we've got to get the agent. We've got um, New York, Angelo needs to be matched up with Carmel, okay, and Angelo's email address. All right, so I've got my agent's query, the name's query, and then I've got a conversion table. And when the con with the conversion table, you need a from and a to column. They can't be named, named anything else. They've got to be named from and to. And what I'm doing here is, okay, so formally, we should have Perth, but some people will put Australia. So the table is going to say, wherever you see Australia, it should actually be Perth. All right. Um, NY, NY, okay, we got that. It should be treated like New York. So let's get on with the get on, right click. I want to uh, get data, combine queries, merge. I want uh, names and then I want agents and I wanna do a left outer join matching city and city. But now I wanna go down here fuzzy matching options, scroll down, transformation table. I want to use what I call the conversion table. And it's telling me 12 of 13 rows have been matched. Okay. All right now, expand this. Don't need that. Okay. Now it's all matched up except for Grady. All right. But we can fix that. I'm going to put it over here. OK. All right. Uh, Grady is USA. From USA to New York. Let's go over here. And here is the sexy part. Data. Refresh. Are you ready? One, two, three. Check it out. That's how we got that all tightened up. And I've had to deal with this. I dealt with a restaurant and their data, they had veggie, veg, vegetarian, or even just a V for vegetarian. Okay. If we had a transformation table at that time, it would have been so beautiful. So beautiful beautiful but we didn't have that at that time so um does that help with the question about the fuzzy lookup yes that helped us okay yeah. all right thank, thank you Oz. Uh, uh, i want to ask one more question that uh, uh -oh. on my previous client i exported a data from sap and uh, fuzzy lookup match some of the records, but those matching were not correct. And then we have to find out manually because at the end of the day, uh, it, it work out, but uh, 
uh, without the transformation table it matched some, some of the some of the names but uh, they were incorrect so no. again we have to do it now are you talking about those other fuzzy matches so let's look at this uh get data records merge Might you be talking about the ones that are down here where you got to set a threshold? Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's that's a different thing. And that is that is a crazy mess. Let me look see if I can get a um get an example. Cuz I did do a video on this. Um I'm on my okay. Let's see. All right. Here is some data. Let's see. Abraham McNamara, Abe McNamara, Alphonse Lee, Al Lee. Okay, Karen Carter is spelled wrong here. It's got two R's. Um, Lou Mills, Mr. Lou Mills. Stephanie Van Dyke, this one has a space in it. Okay, so now we go over here and then I did a 50% match and okay, let's see. Karen Carter and Karen J. Carter got matched up. Mr. Lou Mills, that got matched. Um, it matched the misspelled Karen, um, but there was no match for Abraham McNamara, even though there's Abe McNamara right there and then Al Lee and Alphonse Lee. All right, that's the 50%. And then here is the 15% match where it just found a match for every damn body and just didn't care, right? So um, let's see. Stephanie, Jen, Jenny Penn, Rick Smythe. Now we got to figure out, is this two different people or is this the same person? Because Rick is a common name. Okay. Jed Penn and Jen Penn. No, not the same people. Miles Postman and Mr. Lou Mills. Not the same person. So you got to watch this stuff. Okay. But then you go over here to the 90% match. A McNamara, no match. Alphonse Lee, no match. So you got to be. I'm going to stop sharing. This stuff scares the hell out of me um, because you really have to watch this stuff as you're describing. Some things will work out and other things won't. So maybe it's the kind of thing where, okay. What's at stake? If these people show up on a list that you likely have cancer and we need to get you in here, don't mess with this. You're gonna scare the hell out of people and maybe get sued. But if it's a kind of thing of, hey, we wanna have you drop by and come get some candy or whatever, you know, if, if Lou Mills and Miles Postman wind up showing up, whatever, whatever, you know, or if somebody doesn't come get some candy, it's not a big deal. So it's always the context. And then sometimes, you know, you're thinking about the strategy. Maybe you do your 90% uh, match, your 100% match and move people over. And then you're looking at this next group. And then so and iterate through, right? Because I've done a lot of that with um, with Excel back when I just knew sort, filter, and hand color cells was iterate through. Where's the obvious stuff? Get it out of the way because sometimes half of it will go away. Wow, my problem is much less. Okay, so now I got some stuff that's a little bit crazy. I can deal with that, move that over. And then now I've got maybe out of 200,000, 
Maybe I've got 90 that are just crazy. Well, maybe I can deal with 90 one at a time myself. But, but yeah, you got to iterate through, come up with a strategy, see how you're going to do this. But the main thing, what is at stake? All right. Thanks, Raheem. So yeah, so we are like, what, we got maybe five minutes now? What, what do we want to do in five minutes? Any, anybody have some cake? Any, anybody passing out cake? Uh, um, new Excel version interface is much easier. Um, I don't understand the statement. But um, anyway, Raheem said everybody was going to get some cake. Where's, some, where's the cake at? Where's some cake? So when is your birthday? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, in September. Uh, yes, in September. Yeah, in September. I can't be loud. The neighbors upstairs will come down there and holler at me. Then I had to tell them, get out, get out of here. Get my turkey foot. So you go back upstairs and quit complaining up in, you know. Anyway. All right, all right. Anything else in five minutes? Muhammad. So if anyone have any query or question, Oz is there to answer you. Yes, yes. Any life advice? Any, you know, marriage questions? If, if you're struggling with your marriage, I, I might be able to help. Um, any electricity issues? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Okay, Pravin, Pravin's marriage is okay. Doesn't need any advice from me. No, no electricity issues. Okay, all right. Uh, Oz, can you share about your um, uh, the channel where how how people can connect you? Oh yes. yes, yeah, yes, yes, that yes. And it your is. blog and your YouTube. That would be great. Yeah, my. I'll be sh I'll sharing the link also in the description. Meanwhile, you can share it on the screen, please. Yeah. I will do that. Well, thanks, Raheem, for having me do this. Um, well, I, I, I am very thankful to you for your for your time and knowledge. Thank you all. Thank you so much. After a long time, we are doing this, um, and it's like been three three and a half years back when I met you on Facebook. I mm. still remember. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so here, let's see. I'm going to share my screen. There is my YouTube channel, Excel on Fire. Yes. And my most recent video showed the import from PDF. And that, that is some hot stuff. But yes, Excel on Fire. Okay. So any other questions? Anything else? <clears throat> Sir, mm -hmm. at the 11 hour, I want to thank you with you passing a valuable season. Yes, you are many, so welcome. Many, many thanks. Thank you. You are so welcome. 